Hi all, Sam here, lead teacher of ARC 201. In this video, I'm going to introduce Project 1. Project 1 builds on the last project you did in ARC 200. It's a precedent study. Precedents are past great works that we as designers can learn from. For this precedent study, you'll be redrawing an architectural work of the past, just like you did in ARC 200. Then you'll go deeper with your understanding by analyzing an architectural aspect of the work. For example, daylight. You'll study the project's approach to daylight and hypothesize why the designer chose that approach. Before we get to build our own ideas, we study what great architects of the past have already come up with. By studying, I mean observing, drawing, and analyzing. When we study the works of past great architects, we exercise our hands, our eyes, and our mind together to understand the brilliance and beauty of what others have made. When we learn from what others have designed and built in the past, we are more prepared for that day when something we imagined, we designed, gets built. This project is a chance for you to learn a handful of really important things. You will learn about an important architectural precedent that a lot of architects have been influenced by over the years. You'll learn how to analyze a precedent. This will build your understanding of not only that specific work, but also primary architectural aspects that you can then apply to other precedents or to your own original designs. Things like the connection of a project to the earth and sky, or the interior space of a project, the exterior form, the circulation in and around the project, or the project's approach to daylight. You'll learn more about these terms later in an Architectural Aspects video. This project is also a chance to keep practicing those fundamental design drawing conventions, things you learned in ARC 200 like line weights and putting graphic scales under drawings and labeling everything and putting a north arrow when there's a plan, stuff like that. You'll start learning some software, Adobe Photoshop and Adobe InDesign. You'll keep working on your composition skills when you assemble all your graphics onto a board to be able to present to a group. The prompt lays out the things you need to do for each class, called the products, and runs through a schedule of what is due when. We will work at a methodical pace to build your skills and understanding and give you a chance to work with your classmates to grow and learn. So on the first day of class, January 5th, you'll be given one of five precedent studies. It could be the Farnsworth House, the Bardi House, the Thermal Baths, Villa Busk, or the Church of St. Petri. Your homework between the first and second class is to read the chapter on your precedent in the book, 25 Buildings Every Architect Should Understand, by Simon Unwin. Just a note, Unwin talks a bit about different types of geometry and how they inform design, especially ideal geometry. We won't spend much time focusing on ideal geometry or different types of geometry in this course, so if that's in your reading, you don't have to read those parts too closely. As you're reading the chapter, start answering the five questions listed in the prompt. Your answers to these questions are what is due for the second class. These answers should be writing and sketches in your sketchbook. Here's some examples of past students responding to questions in their sketchbook. The answers you come up with should be thorough and thoughtful. Your sketches don't need to be amazing works of art. They can be quick. Uh, but the point is that they clearly communicate your ideas. Also, before class, watch the videos listed in the schedule and write down any comments or questions that came to mind. You'll be able to participate more actively in class if you have some notes to rely on. In the second class, you'll be given the architectural aspect that you'll analyze. It'll be either earth and sky, space and form, circulation, or daylight. Once you have your precedent, and your architectural aspect, you are now ready to start analyzing and creating a full precedent study. As you move through the project, pay attention to the schedule and the products listed in the prompt to know what is due when. 
Along the way, your job is not just to develop a beautiful and meaningful precedent study, it's also to teach others what you've learned. You will have only studied one precedent and one architectural aspect. But to be successful in this course, you need to learn about all the precedents and all the architectural aspects. To do this, you will teach others about your precedent study. This way, the whole class will learn about all five precedents and all four architectural aspects. Then we can move on to creative design projects where you get to make your own original work. That's all for the Project One intro. If you have any comments or questions, jot them down and bring them to class.